Captain America. Yes, Captain America is upon us, and if you haven't seen it already, go see Captain America right now. Uh, Captain America, man, wow. I enjoyed the hell out of Captain America more than I thought I was. Um, it, the movie was good. Uh, the movie was very, very good. I, I can't really describe the movie. You have to go see it. I, I think it's very good. I, you know, I'm not gonna overhype it, but damn it, that movie was very well made. It, it's it's rare to have a superhero movie you watch and you're just like, wow. There, there. The movie had no fluff to it at all. It was a straightforward story. Point A to point B, beginning to end. Everything was set up. Everything made sense. You didn't have any stupid stuff in it. You know, the movie was very tongue in cheek. It was goofy at times, but it, the movie knows it's goofy at times, and it plays off of it very well. Um, the movie, first and foremost, was made by Joe Johnson. If you don't know Joe Johnson, Joe Johnson was the guy who did The Rocketeer, Jurassic Park 3. Uh, he did a, it's a couple other movies, but the one movie in particular that this movie definitely draws influence for from is The Rocketeer. If you haven't seen The Rocketeer, do yourself a favor. It's on Blu-ray, I believe, and it's on DVD. Do yourself a favor, go out and see it. I believe it's on Netflix, too. I don't know. It might be on Netflix streaming, but if you haven't, do yourself a favor, watch Rock Tier. And you'll definitely see all the, 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 the similarities this movie, the Rock Tier, and this movie has. Because the movie plays off of Joe Johnson's strengths, and that is he does very good period pieces. And he was perfect for this movie. Um, when you... You know, everything from, you know, the World War II stuff was on point, the, 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 the New York setting, it, it, it all flowed and fit together. Um, Chris Evans as Captain America was good. Him as Steve Rogers and then Captain America was very good. Um, his scenes with, as, as the sickly Steve Rogers was very believable. They did a very good job with the special effects on that because that was just, my initial, before the movie came out, was like, how are they going to do Steve Rogers? going to have somebody playing him different? Are they going to have him, you know... How are they gonna do this? And they they did a good job on it. You you believed he was the small, sickly, skinny Steve Rogers. I, I don't know how they did it, but I gotta look it up. But they did a very good job, Steve Rogers. You know, he plays this guy who just you know never gives up attitude. You know, he just wants to serve his country and just be a part of something. And you know, the scientist that finds him, uh, uh, was it Abraham Erskine, played by I think Stanley Tucci, whatever his name is. He finds him and he sees, you know, that Steve Rogers has this, you know, he has a good heart about him. He, he has a very good thing about him and stuff. And, and, and he did a very, good, very convincing job as Dr. Erskine, as his father figure, so to speak. Um, basically, the story is, you know, the whole Steve Rogers, his origin story is, as, you know, coming from this sickly guy from Brooklyn, New York, and then, you know, he gets put into the super soldier program and bam, he's Captain America, you know, he's serving the country. And one of the things I like about that is, you know, in the comics, you know, in the comics, he, you know, gets the soldier serum and stuff like that, and there's a Nazi person that comes in there, kills the doctor, and, you know, he escapes and all that stuff, and he fights him and stuff, and then, bam, he starts to battle. Well, this movie, they did, they, they turn it around, and they did in a very funny but good way. You know, after Erskine gets killed by the Nazi doctor, he, you know, Tommy Lee Jones plays the Colonel, who, by the way, he's very fun. Tommy Lee Jones is like very funny in this movie. If he, if whenever he's in the scene, he does. He's very funny and he does a very good job as the commanding Colonel. But anyways, the Colonel decides, you know, well, we really don't need you anymore. You know, you, you why, why would we need you on the battle, battlefield and stuff? Well, meanwhile, you got the president over here saying that, hey, you know, we could use you out there. Do you want to serve your country? And then, bam, they have him. Um, promoting war bonds at USO shows and he's in the wink and nod to the comic Captain America costume, you know, you know, the, the old costume that you see in the comics and stuff like that. Very slight nod and it's a very good montage sequence of him going in there and at one point, you know, he's punching Hitler out multiple times and stuff. So that was actually pretty funny. I enjoyed that aspect of the movie and stuff. And you know, you know after he does all that stuff, you know, he finally jumps into action, he has to save Bucky and you know, them. And that's when the movie starts getting good. It, it, it was already good, but that's when the movie starts jump starting to the action and stuff. Because, you know, he's he has to save his friend Bucky and the rest of all the other prisoners, and the prisoners turn out to be the Howling Commandos, which is consistent of Dum Dum Dugan. Uh, there's one other guy in there, he's an English guy, uh, I think it's James Fowlesworth. 
Now, James Fallsworth is Union Jack in the comics, but the movie doesn't really allude that he's Union Jack, which I, I really think the movie should have kind of pushed the aspect of the Union Jack something, but whatever. You know, yeah, Dumb Dumb and that, that whole Howling Commando, the, all the Howling Commandos in the movie were good. I enjoyed that dynamic and stuff. You know, he saves Bucky, he saves all the, you know, prisoners and stuff. He's a hero, and they put him in the Captain America costume. Now, the Captain America costume that he's finally in draws parallels to the Ultimate Comics Captain America World War II costume, which I kind of knew they were going to do. Uh, and so that the costume was very good you know everything from the shield to, to the helmet and stuff they did a very good job of implementing the wings without making it looking goofy as hell everything was good and that's when it jump starts you had this montage sequence of Captain America and the Howling Commandos you know busting down the Red Skulls you know weapons factories and stuff and it's it's very good it, it gives you a summation of this is who the essence of Captain America is this is who he is, this is who the kind of commanders is, he don't take no crap from anybody. Now, the Red Skull. Red Skull, played by Hugo Weaving. Very good. Very phenomenal. He has a menacing command as Red Skull, and you see it. My only thing that I was very hesitant on was, like, how are they going to do the costume for it? Because if remember, if you've seen the 1990 Captain America, which I do not recommend anybody don't watch, don't do it. But the Red Skull in that one was pretty bad. This one, they did a very good job of capturing. He has the look like he does in the comics, and it and they pulled off well. And you really, when you look at the when you look at the prosthetics of who you know looking at the Red Skull, you would never know that's Agent Smith under there. So they did a good job. Red Skull was was very good in the movie. It's the menacing, you know, threatening. He did not ham it up. He played it straight, and I like that. Um, the other half you have Toby. Was it Arnim Arnim Zola? He's a character in the comics who they throw little Easter eggs like with his face on his little big magnifying glass. And if you read his character in the comics, he has his face inside of a robot, robotic body and stuff. It's very weird. Um, the main thing about the movie, the main story was basically, as I said, you know, the origins of Captain America. And he's going against the Red Skull who, Red Skull pulls an artifact called the Cosmic Cube that will give him power and stuff. And he's running this subdivision of the Nazis called... Uh, um, um, Hydra, which is also something I also like too. They actually implemented Hydra into the movie. Very good. They actually had the look of the comics minus the green. So, but you know, I can deal with that. Um, yeah, it, the movie from beginning to end was good. Uh, you had the relationship with Steve Rogers and Peggy Carter. Very believable because at the beginning, you know, they had this kind of like you know dynamic. I guess relationship, you know, you know, he doesn't know a lot about girls because you know he's sickly Steve Rogers. He doesn't know, you know, he becomes Steve Rogers, and you know, she, you can see that she's starting to grow attracted to him and stuff, you know, and sees, you know, he's a good-hearted person and stuff, and you believe that because over the course of the movie, it just builds up and builds up, and by the end of the movie, you know, they kind of they love each other. They have this attraction, but it's tragic in a sense because by the end of the movie, you know, he's fighting the Red Skull on his little ship and stuff. And, you know, he defeats the Red Skull, you know, and he has to crash the ship. The ship that he has is this big ship that's run off the energy of the Cosmic Cube. And it's going towards New York and he's supposed to destroy it. Blah, blah, blah. He defeats Red Skull and he has to crash the ship. And it's, and it's, a, very, it's a very personal scene because, you know, he's on the... It's while he's on the communicate with Peggy Carter and she's like, oh my god, you know, I can't, I don't want you to leave and stuff. And he's all telling her, hey, you know, I'll give you that last dance, blah, 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 blah. You know, and he crashes. You know, and at that point, you know, you're just like, oh, wow, that sucks, you know. And, and you know, at that point, you're just like, wow. At that point, it's, it's the end of the movie and you're just kind of like, wow, this is, this, it, it's phenomenal. Um... And by the end, you know, custom modern era, Nick Fury comes in. Now, that's another thing that I really... That's my only gripe with the movie. Maybe it's not really a gripe. I really wish they implemented Nick Fury into the World War II stuff. I understand that they're drawing off the Ultimates and stuff. But, you know, I really would have liked to see Nick Fury in World War II. That's just me. Um, but the one thing that stands out from the movie, besides the story, everything flowing together, the Avengers trailer. The Avengers trailer is worth the price of a minute to, to see this movie it's worth the movie is worth to go to the theaters but the, the, the double 
you know, the, 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 the cream of the crop to see it is just for the Avengers trailer. And it's and it gives you a taste of what the movie is and stuff. You see all the major players, you see everything that's going on, and you're just like, oh shit, you know, this is gonna be good. So yeah, Aven Captain America, the first Avenger, very phenomenal movie. I suggest you check it out. Um, if you're very, this is just, just another thing, if you're very interested in Captain America and you really want to read the comics of Captain America, I suggest you check out Ed Brubaker's run on Captain America. Um, Ed Brubaker has done a, did a very good job of bringing Captain America knowledge to readers and stuff. His run on, his first run of Captain America is on Winter Soldier. Now if you really want, if very interested in knowing, you know, about the Bucky character and stuff, I suggest you check out Brubaker's first run on it. I think the first arc of it was called Winter Soldier, and it actually picks up on what happened to Bucky. Kind of sort of how he happened to it in the movies, but it kind of picks up on the comics, because in the comics, up to that point, he was dead. So Brubaker actually retconned him back into continuity and stuff, but he did it very well to where it didn't, you know, wasn't stupid con stu stupid retcon. So I suggest if you really want to read anything on Captain America, it Ed Brubaker. Um, the first arc to his thing was called Winter Soldier, and then afterwards it was Red Medicine, and so on and so on, Death of Captain America. So, very interested. I suggest you check that out. Overall, go see Captain America First Avenger. You'll enjoy it. What else can I say, man? Go see it, especially for the Avengers trailer. So, this is CJ, signing out.